Welcome to Copeland. I'm Dan. How do you tell if your soil or your land is fertile? Maybe you're thinking of buying a piece of land and you want to know if it's good for homesteading. Or you have a piece of land, you're trying to figure out where to put your garden. How do you tell where the fertility is at? Well, before I tell you the process, I want to tell you a secret. And that is, it doesn't really matter. Look at this dirt. <laughs> I hesitate to call it soil. It's more dirt. You can't even grow weeds. That's how bad it is. It's terrible soil. It's terrible because for about seven years, we had pine trees dropping pine needles on it, making the soil very acidic. And then we had a bulldozer push all the organic material into piles. And all the top soil scraped off, pushed into piles and then the bulldozer compressed the ground with their tracks and left heavy clay that holds water so water and air can't penetrate and this is what we're left with the ability to grow just about nothing and yet I still bought the land and I'm super excited because it's really easy to add fertility let's see how we tell if there's fertility in the soil Take a scoop of soil, turn it over, and look for anything that moves. Any worms, insects, ants, spiders, grubs. There's nothing. Because there's no life in the soil. I already knew that. But that is how you tell. The amount of microbiology in your soil determines your fertility. You might be asking, well, why does the number of insects and ants and spiders help tell if I'm going to be able to grow plants? Well, let's understand how plants eat. Fertility is all about growing and producing. So you need to understand how they eat. First, plants eat minerals. Minerals like rocks. Lots of rocks, lots of potential minerals. And over time, those rocks leach their minerals into the soil called mineral salts and plants and trees they absorb those minerals through their root system and that is how they grow now in a garden you're not going to find a lot of rocks typically most of the time they're removed and annual plants like tomatoes they don't have a very deep root system they put their energy into growing tall and producing fruit so they don't grow deep like perennials and because of that most gardeners use chemical fertilizers, meaning they take a liquid soluble form of nitrogen, potassium, and calcium, and all the minerals that plants need to grow, and they pour it right on the roots, and that's how they absorb the minerals they need to grow. Organically, though, <clears throat> we need to get the minerals from the rocks and bring it into the garden. How do we do that? We look to the trees, not these pine trees, they are pretty useless. But the tall, leafy trees. What happens is every year, the ones with the long tap root, they push deeper into the soil and the roots spread out a little bit further and they access these mineral salts that hadn't been accessed a year before. And they absorb those mineral salts through the root system, into the trunk, up through the branches and out to the leaves. And in the fall, those leaves, which contain those minerals, they drop to the ground and they start to decompose. They're decomposing because bacteria and fungus are eating the cell structure of the leaf. Now, as good farmers, homesteaders, gardeners, we try to take those leaves and other brown materials and we try to bring them into the garden and put them in our compost pile. And we keep them wet aerated. Why? So that the bacteria that's decomposing the leaves can multiply. And as the bacteria and fungus multiply, the leaves decompose faster. This is our compost, what we typically think of compost. But it's actually bacteria doing our, all the hard work and my chickens are helping to aerate it. So as the bacteria multiply on the dead leaves and the dead organic material, wood chips and whatnot, Predators come. What eat bacteria? Well, there's little microorganisms called protozoa. They eat bacteria. 
And as they eat the bacteria and they poop out the remains of the eaten bacteria, the minerals that were locked into the bodies of the bacteria, they become available to plants. And as the protozoa multiply, they attract nematodes. And the nematodes feed on the protozoa and they poop out the minerals that are available to plants. And then you have worms and other insects come and eat the nematodes and they poop out the minerals. And you have this chain of life coming from birds that eat the worms all the way down to the bacteria and fungus that eat the organic material that comes from trees. So as long as you've got insects in your ground, you know that every chain in that web of life is connected and there's plenty of bacteria in the ground. And that will make for fertile plants. If you don't have any insects, you need to create the environment that's suitable to bacteria and inoculate the ground with bacteria. So how do we do that? Well, we need to break the ground up. When you have a lot of land like this, you get what's called a subsoiler, which is basically a two foot knife that cuts the ground, slices through the ground. You drag behind your tractor and it slices through the ground and breaks up the ground, allowing water to penetrate into the ground and air to penetrate into the ground. And where you have air and water and some heat because the ground remains at constant temperature, you'll have bacteria. And that bacteria will start to eat the organic material in the clay soil and will eat things like tree trunks that were, didn't get fully removed, that's all good food for the bacteria. And they'll start to decompose the organic material, materia, and they will draw all the predators and you'll get worms, and the worms will poop out uh, their worm castings, which will create hummus, which is a material that absorbs water and allows more bacteria to grow. So this is all about building the infrastructure below the soil, that is fertility. It's very easy to do. And don't worry if you don't have any fertility because it's easy to add. Hopefully this, vi this video was helpful. I'm posting new videos over at 2ac3.com forward slash Copeland. I've got some photos over there, exclusive member content. It's basically my Instagram and Patreon combined. So come check us out. Thanks for giving this video a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you out there.